deliverance on it. You know, that's a, that's a thing that God is setting up so that he can bring deliverance to those that he's reaching out to. So y'all got an awesome, awesome yeah. ministry. When the Lord told me to, to start a little bit I didn't really want to do this. Uh, I wanted to be an evangelist and go around the world and do all that. And I didn't really want to do this at all. And I said, well, what are we going to do? That's what we got to do. What are we going to call something like that? He said, well, I give revelation, knowledge, and understanding through your teachings. I want you, this is the word that my heart gave me. I want you to call it word of revelation. As far as I know, that's the only we don't want to judge the word they did. I ain't never seen one like I've seen revelated word and all, but I've never seen word of revelation. As far as I know, we're the only one that does that. And and as far as my sweetie pie, I was dreaming about her before I met her. And I was literally having dreams about her. I was on the radio. Um, and I kept having these dreams of this very dark skinned lady. And she had this pretty voice and said, I promise I love you and I respect you. I never said anything to her in those dreams. Amen. And, 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 and one dream we had this real light skinned lady with real long hair. And, and, and she was trying to make me marry her. And, and when I told her I would, my dad would put a shotgun on me. So I was running in my dream. <laughs> and the first time I saw her, I was in the 11th grade at school. The, they had this thing called Columbus Track Meets. And I saw her running track, and I wouldn't even say, I was a heathen girl, but I was a heathen girl, but the cavalry I'm telling you. And I heard the voice of the Lord tell me, that's going to be your wife. Amen, amen. And she was running track, and she was real built, real muscular, and not a skinny, not like the way of 115 pounds, 120 pounds. And, but she was real muscular, and I'm like, oh, she, she run like a man. <laughs> one night when I was on the radio and I was at the ministry and, and I would do stuff on cassette and send it in the Lord said no I don't want you to do that I want you to go in because I'm going to have people call it in and I, I'm going to need you to pray for them so I, I started going in and doing this, this show live and she called one night and she was crying I did a message called deep rooted hurts that stuff that is so deep rooted and it just hurts you and it, just a lingering pain she was crying and I was praying for her and I was telling them, Miss well, Miss Hartwood, um, I got messages that I just give to them. I was trying to sell the message. What about the And I need that way to help sell the radio. So I just started giving them away. <laughs> but when I did that, so many people started giving back into me. And she finally came by my apartment one time to get some messages. And um, I was getting ready to go to the mall to take my kids to the mall. That's what Miss Miss Hardy, you can ride with us if you want to. She jumped right on the car. We <laughs> <laughs> went to the mall. I uh, bought her something to eat. Now, this is what blew my mind. This girl can eat. <laughs> 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 no, no, he got a big, right <laughs> big, huge fries and a big old burger. And I'm about halfway through mine, she was finished. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I said, well, Miss Hardy, you got it. But she was so loving, so nice, so kind. To me, I've never seen beauty the way I've seen it in my life. Amen. Amen. I, everything fits from the way that she looks, the way that she talks, the way that she walks. The way that she carries herself, she was like the old person and the young person's body. She had so little body fat when we first got married, and I had, I had a big old fat. She was doing fifty. I mean, a hundred crunches. Fifty men push up. I could do it. I could not do that. Been there. And um, it just, she just blew my mind. Just, just, I was just so amazed because when we would have service, she, she would like be a cheerleader for me. Amen. And the Lord would bring so much revelation in. She's just like, hey, what the Lord going to say today? What the Lord going to say? She's just excited. I don't know, baby, you know, whatever you give me, I'm going to say it. <laughs> she has been such a tremendous blessing in my life. Um, when I first got sick, she quit a job to take care of me. Um, the same time I got sick, she wasn't working by that time, and so... 
she enjoyed being home. And I used to tell her, baby, quit your job. I'm making no money. We, we, we can survive. She's a worker. And she's proven that. And I praise God for it. And also, I praise God for our team. Amen. 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 and we praise God for them. And y'all got to see, it's, ministry can be hard sometimes. Oh, sure. yeah. It can be hard. You got to find faithful people. Mm. You got to find faithful people. People that you can trust. That's yeah. it. People that you can trust. And, and when you go silent on people, that's not good all the time. Sometimes you got to speak up. Mm. And you got to let people know how you feel. And I honor the Lord because God makes a way for us to, to feel. Because out of our belly, the Lord brings us to the Lord. And so we can speak life into it. I want to introduce to y'all, amen, my beautiful, beautiful princess. Amen. Amen. So awesome. Amen. amen. Y'all just don't know, I used to have to get on this girl about teaching. She wouldn't do it. No, no she won't do the thing because I'm not going to do it. She got mad at me once and said, say the morning prayer and walked out. All I had to do was say, just pray, baby, just pray. I ain't going to do that. But she did it. Amen. And the Lord made her apologize to me one time. Uh, she said some stuff because she got mad, and y'all know she'll fight too. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have to grab her. And She's a up. veteran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Amen. 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 Father, we bind up every demonic force right now in the name of Jesus, every hindrance, every distraction. We bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. I pray right now, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I pray they will be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. I like the look of words. And he says, if, as a condition, 
it's a requirement, it's a stipulation, it's a conditional call. He said, if, if me there is a poss possibility that you might not. Mm -hmm. right. 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 He says, if you continue <clears throat> in my word. And the uh, Amplified says, if you hold fast no. to my instructions okay. Amen. and live according to them. So God has given us instructions in his word. Yes. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, I says, the heart is deceitful mm -hmm. and desperately wicked. Who can know it but God? So our heart can deceive us. Mm -hmm. You can think you're saved and you're not saved. Mm -hmm. You can be doing certain things or doing things for the kingdom, but you're so busy doing things that you don't have that relationship with God. But turn with me to Matthew 7. Love the word of God, Matthew 7. Amen. And looking at verse 21, it says, not everyone, so it lets you know, not everyone mm. that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. It says, many, many is a number you can't even number, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name cast out devils. Oh. And in your name done many wonderful works. He says, then will I profess unto them, I never mm. knew you. Wow. Mm. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Mm. I never mm. knew you. So you were going around, you would prophesy. <coughs> Some people brought a lie. They, said, they got a word from the Lord, and they don't really have a word from the Lord. God sent them, knowing that God didn't send them. He said, you're doing all this stuff. You, you're, you're naming. Look what they're doing. They're naming their works. Yeah. This is what we did. Yeah. But in other words, what he said, you did, but you didn't do it for me. Come on. Mm -hmm. Instead of me getting the glory, you got the glory. Okay. Instead of you wanting people, me, they were coming to you. They were seeking you. And instead of you telling them you need to seek God, mm -hmm. you were the one that was intervening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he says, I never yeah, knew we you. We yeah, don't want to be in a state where we're doing all these works. Amen. And then stand before God and God said, never, never, never ever. Mm -hmm. I never knew who you. Mm -hmm. I never knew you. You say you knew me, but I didn't know you. Mm -hmm. You know how some people say, I know the Lord, but does he know you? Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you know he know when he calls your name. <laughs> Late in the midnight hour, you wake up the night, and, and you hear his name. Yeah. 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 And y'all yeah. yeah. call the name. Okay. Yes. And you in the midnight hour, yes. y'all yes. deep sea said, Mary. Yes. Ever. Call you by name. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. by sister Albert, but Albert. <laughs> Now, Sister Mary, Mary. Yeah. So he calls us by name. Yeah. And verse 20 says, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them. James 1 22 says, We got to be hearers of the word, be ye doers of the word, and not just hearers only. That means I just can't hear the word. Some people come and they hear the word every week, week after week yeah. after week, Wednesday night Bible study. Sunday morning or Friday night service, they come and they hear the word, but they will not do what the word says. Right. Or they want to serve God on their terms. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they, they want to be convenient. You know, mm -hmm. I'll serve God when it's convenient for me. Mm -hmm. But how many know God calls us out of comfort zone? Yeah. And that, that God would allow certain situations to occur to keep us out of comfort zone. But you can get comfortable. In God. We yeah. should never become comfortable with God. We should always strive to do better. Amen. In verse yeah. of the uh, other, other, other um, early in the chapter, he tells you, he said, beware, because he said there are going to be many false prophets mm -hmm. that are going to come to you in sheep's clothing, mm -hmm. but inwardly, they look good on the outside. Mm -hmm. They are ravening wolves. You know how wolves do what they what? They devour. Yeah. They go in and they destroy. You know, a lot of times they run in packs. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But you know, you know somebody that got something against you, they, right. they're never going to do it by themselves. They always have to right. get somebody else involved yeah. in it. They got to run in pack. They got to have somebody to come to agreement with them. Yeah. And Amos 3 3 says, Can two walk together except we agree? Yeah. That means yeah. that I cannot say I'm walking with God and I'm not in agreement with His word. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. I cannot say that. If I do, I'm, a, I'm making a false profession. I am a liar. Mm -hmm. I am deceiving myself. Mm -hmm. I don't even know the truth. I feel I'm all right. I feel. See, that's what we go by feeling. I feel like I'm all right. 
But if I'm not going according to his word, Amen. if I'm not in agreement according to his teaching, then I'm living a lie. Yeah. I'm living a lie. He says, if you, he said, he that doeth these things, he said, I will liken him or compare him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended. Yeah. And the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, but it was founded upon a rock. So we know in this Christian world that there are going to be times that we go through. Yeah. There, are, there could be multiple storms. You have emotional storms. You have storms. You know, when a storm comes through, it comes through to destroy. Mm -hmm. It comes through to uh, bring damage. And I forgot to do the word. I won't tell you what the word continue means. He said you're going to continue. You need to remain in a state of place. And another word means to abide. To abide. To abide, mm. to last, mm -hmm. to endure, mm -hmm. to persevere. Mm -hmm. It's a persistent continuance against influences mm -hmm. that tend to weaken, mm -hmm. undermine, or destroy. The enemy comes, he wants to weaken mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Weaken us to where point we don't believe in God. That's why you have so many people now, they're, they deviated from the word. Now they're accepting everything. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. if it's a sin to God, it should be a sin to us. Amen. If sin separates us, then my key is to, to get in the is I've got to repent. Yeah. And you know, we don't hear a lot about, I know Pastor Jim will do this all the time, but you don't hear a lot of preachers talking about repentance now. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a taboo word. Don't, don't yeah. say that. Don't tell me to repent. I want to live like I want to live. I want you telling me what I got to do. I'm grown. I can do my own thing. Why are you telling me this? But then, if you have ever asked my to ask you truth, tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. And then you give them truth. Mm -hmm. And then they reject the truth. Yeah. And you think they're rejecting you, but they're really rejecting God. Because yeah. you're just a vessel yeah. that he chooses to work with. Yeah. Right. And sometimes they reject you because you don't look like they think you ought to look. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. You know, you may not have the suit on. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then, but you've got so much God in you, but they're just on looking at the, uh, and that's how people get fooled all the time. That's why they get yeah. deceived. You have somebody come in, they got a suit, and they this, and they this, and they talk this, and they talk that. But you're not trying the spirit by the spirit. You're not checking out their fruits. He says, you should know them by the word, by their fruit. Yeah. We should have some spiritual fruit in our life. We should, yeah. we should have some of them. Yeah. Even if you ain't got all of them, you should have some of them. You should have some love, some joy, some peace, some meekness, some goodness, some self-control. You ought to be something evident. Yeah. Now, if you ain't got no fruit, he said, check the fruit. So if you ain't got no fruit, then that tells you something right there. But we just want to believe everything because it sounds good. Just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's right. Amen. We got to be to discern. Okay, just because that sounds good. It should be a check in your spirit. Okay, uh-uh. I like to say that, but uh-uh, something ain't right about that. If I do something out of order, I got so much gum, God ought to be to let me know you're out of order. Nobody's out telling me, boys, I should be able to know that I am out of order. Why? Because I'm supposed to have that relationship yes. with him. Yes. And he talks to me, he'll tell me, daughter, you're wrong. Yeah. Or daughter, go apologize. Just because you're a pastor or apostle, that's that doesn't right. mean that you can't talk that you can talk to people in any kind of way. Yeah. You can't yeah. yeah. apologize. Amen. Amen. But pride will keep you from apologizing. Yes. Pride yes. Well, I'm the pastor. I'm the apostle. I ain't going to say that to them. Mm -hmm. How is it going to make me look? Like mm -hmm. Pastor Jim, you got to put the dignity aside. <laughs> <laughs> because why? Because I want to be pleasing to God. Amen. I want to do things the way God told me to do. Yeah. God said, pray for them, then pray for them. If God says repent, then repent. If he mm -hmm. says apologize, then go and apologize mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Why? Don't come by. Don't worry about what people are going to think because mm -hmm. God is trying to take us somewhere. Yes. And in order for him to take us somewhere, we got to put pride aside. Yes. We got to let it go. And we need to come and examine ourselves. Okay. Hmm. Am I operating like that? Amen. Is that spirit of me? I remember one time <laughs> I was on like I was fresh out of the military, so I was um I was hard. Yeah, I, I had that hardness. I worked around a lot of men, so there was a hardness to me. Mm -hmm. And I and I would tell the kids I have them cleaning and cleaning with toothbrushes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and they said they told they said where she treated us like we're soldiers. <laughs> and uh, I mean my sister I told she said she said you too hard on them. I said no I'm not. Mm -hmm. I said they need to do what I tell them to do. <laughs> I'm used to them to, you know I'm used to people telling yeah. me what I, I'm used to telling people what to do and them right. doing it. And I began to ask the Lord. I said Lord, am I? And you know what He said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, the thing about how God, you said, well, God showed me all this stuff about this person, that person. Now I'm like, hmm. Well, when was the last time God showed me something about you? Amen. Uh, Amen. Because a lot of times, if God showed me something, 
about somebody else. Sometimes it's a trait in them that that's I gotta right. be, so that's why I don't recognize. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. instead of saying, oh, God showed me this, God showed me that. Oh, yes, God showed me this. Yes, he did, yes, he did. But what is he showing you about you? Yeah. What is showing you, uh, what is your kind of attitude? Amen. What kind of attitude do you have? Do you have the right attitude? Are you the wrong spirit? But that verse 25 says, and the rain descended and the floods came, but it was founded upon the rock. It was founded upon Christ. They knew that Christ was the source. Christ was their foundation. And so when the winds came and the storm blew, it did not fall. And we are that house. So God doesn't want us to fall when the storms come. And the storm, because we know they're coming. Yeah. You know they're coming. That's why we got to get the word in us so we can stand and withstand when they come. And verse 26 says, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. On, See, both heard, one heard and did, the other just heard. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then we wonder why nothing changes in our life. Amen. Because all we're doing is hearing it. Hearing it because it sounds good. Hearing it because it makes my flesh jump and make me feel good. Mm -hmm. But it's not doing anything internally. You're not changing. You're still the same. After 10 years, something ought to be a change somewhere. Yeah. You struggle with the same thing. Is, is God able to deliver or not? Exactly. Either he is or he's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you say he is. We say he believes. But why are we struggling with that same thing? Mm -hmm. And it's not like it's a big thing. Amen. It's a little thing. But we find ourselves struggling with it. Because number one, we won't acknowledge it. In order to be delivered, I got to acknowledge that it's a problem. But if I don't think it's a problem, mm -hmm. then how can I ever get delivered from it? If I won't acknowledge it because I'm so afraid of what people might think about me, yeah. then you know, then you want to keep your demon? You want to hold on to it? <laughs> and when we were in the service one night, and um, one, one Sunday morning, and this woman came in, I remember Sister Daphne said, Pastor Mary, she's that's the same lady that was at the other church that we was at. And the thing was, when we was at the other church, she was quiet during praise and worship. Mm -hmm. But about five, ten minutes after the woman got got ready to miss, she wanted to jump up and start prophesying. Mm -hmm. And so oh, I guess I had stepped out for a minute. And I guess the pastor told me to take her out. She did the same thing. So when she came out, I told her, I said, listen. I said, you're out of order. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, God told me to say that. I said, stop lying on God. God didn't tell you to say that. Mm -hmm. I said, God is out of order. order. Right. I said, you did the same thing two weeks ago at another church. <laughs> Because she did. It was quiet doing praise and worship, but as soon as the woman of God got her speech, she wanted to jump up and start prophesying. I said, now you're welcome to stay in the service. Mm -hmm. I said, but you got to be quiet when you go back in. Thank you. She said, no, nah, I can't be quiet. I said, well, you're welcome to get prayer. I said, we can pray for you. I will pray for you. I said, because that, I'm sorry, but that's not God. She said, well, no, I can't be quiet. But I said, well, you can't go back in there. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I said, run the court. Let's go get a pocketbook. Go get a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she rejected. That's right. She was saying, you know, but it's time to come out. She's going to church after church doing the same thing, waiting till the preacher got ready to go. Amen. Number one, you're a distraction for the people that are trying to hear what Amen. the word of God is saying. Amen. And now all the attention is being drawn to you and they're not listening to the word. Everything is focused on you. Amen. That's the wrong spirit. That's, the wrong spirit. That's not the spirit of God. Amen. But it says that he that do the same of mine and do the not shall be likened to a foolish man. Now one is wise and one is foolish. Yeah. Amen. Now the foolish one, he says, um, which built his house upon sand. And you know how sand is. You know, when it gets a little wet, it gets a little hard, but after a while it's going to soften back up again. He says, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. <coughs> Number one, you were the, people were dependent on themselves. They were dependent on their words, but I'm doing this, and I'm doing this for God. Is that what they say? But do you have the right motive? Amen. Some people can do things because they have the wrong motive. Amen. Some people join a ministry because they want to pass out their business card. Mm. So they want some connection. Well, let me, let me give you my business card. Let me give you this. Let me give you that. They're not really joining to hear the word. They're joining to try to make business prospect. Mm. So number one, they're doing the work to say, oh, I do this for you, but you know, let me let me give you my card. Let me give you this. Let me give you that. Mm. The motives are wrong. So when we serve yeah. God, we got to make sure we're doing it for the right reason. Right. We got to make sure we're doing it because we love God. Yeah. And, and not what somebody can give to us. Yes. Amen. It's got to be a heart thing. Amen. My heart has got to be changed. Psalm 51, David said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew yes. a right That's spirit true. within That's me. Yes. I like that Sister Jerry was talking about how our words. And God gave me a song, gave me, 
sometimes I don't think I'm loud and I shouldn't. And he says, Psalm 141, 3, he says, set a watch over my mouth, oh Lord, keep the door of my lips. And God was giving me that scripture, giving me that scripture. I said, Lord, am I run off in my mouth too much? Yes. <laughs> See, we don't want God to show us the good things. We don't want God to show us these other errors in our life that, that we need um, deliverance in. We just want to hear all the good things. What kind of father would just tell you all the good things? Amen. Amen. A father is going to watch. The father is going to tell you this is wrong. And they're going to tell you why it's wrong. Amen. God's word tells us this is wrong. It tells us why it's wrong. Yeah. So all these examples in the word, they're examples for us to help us to yeah. learn to not make the same mistakes they made. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to, um, turn with me to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 20. And you know this walk, sometimes we get discouraged. We get angry. We feel like God done lied to us. Jeremiah felt like that. He yeah. felt like God tricked him. <laughs> he did. He felt like God tricked him. Jeremiah 20, and at verse 7, he says, Oh, Lord, thou hast deceived me. <laughs> <laughs> I was as God didn't deceive him. Because in chapter 1, God told him, he said, they're not going to hear you. Yeah. Well, God, why would you tell me to tell them something they're exactly. not going to listen to me? <laughs> because they would be without excuse. Oh. They would be without excuse. Yeah. Wow. He said, now, he felt like that because why? Here he is. They done put him in the stocks. Here he is doing what God told him to do. Yeah. Yeah. Following God's instructions. You don't follow God's instructions, did what God told you to, and all of a sudden people turned on you. They, yeah. on you. they lied on you. They yeah. said this. They said that. He said, Lord, you deceived me. He said, I was deceived. <laughs> he said, you are <laughs> He said, thou art strong than I, and you have prevailed. He said, I'm in derision. I'm in a bad state right now. <laughs> Everybody mocking me. They talking about me. They laughing at me. Here I am, a prophet of God, and here I am in the stock. They got me out here on display for everybody to see. <laughs> so God, you treat me, but you didn't tell me it's going to be all like this. <laughs> we up there like that. Lord, you didn't tell me that now. That's why he didn't tell you. <laughs> because he had told us something we wouldn't want to do it. That's right. You're right. He said, verse 8 says, For since I spoke, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, Y'all have said that? I will not make mention. I ain't gonna say nothing else. I ain't gonna miss nobody else. <laughs> People, you think you get on my nerve. You don't say something to get on your nerve. <laughs> He said, I am not going to say anything else. Because every time I say something, I get in trouble. <laughs> Even though I'm saying what God told on, me to on. say. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming out of myself saying this. I'm following the instructions of God. He says, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart Ooh, as a burning fire. You know when it's really in you, can't you can't be quiet. You can't shut up. You, can't shut up. you may say you ain't going to say nothing, but an opportunity come out, it's like, oh, he's a like fire. And I got to get it out. I can't keep it in. I can't contain it. God is too big. You got to let him out. Don't try to put him in a container. He says, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones he says i was weary with forbearing and i could not say he said i had to say something i couldn't be quiet <laughs> Amen. because of discouragement because of things we go through sometimes the enemy wants to shut us up yeah Amen. he wants us to make us be quiet yeah just don't say anything don't go to church anymore they hurt your feelings don't go mm -hmm. stay right where you at Stay in the place that Satan wants you at instead of where God wants you at. God tells you, get up. Then I tell Joshua that when they were going to fight the Amalekites, and he said, why can we beat them? Joshua got on his face. Lord said, get up. Exactly. They're sinning. Exactly. Yeah, what you crying for? Yeah. 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 What you calling for? Get up. And sometimes we have, as I said, we get down crying. Lord said, sin and tell get up. Get up. Get up and repent. Amen. Get out of that state. You trying to stay in that state? No. I don't want to I want repentance right now. Come on. I want you to find out the source of the sin. Yes. 
Look at um, Look at Luke eight. Look at oh, Luke eight twenty two. Now remember, that's what anyone wants to do. He wants to weaken us, Jesus. undermine, make us think God ain't who he says he is. Did not he tell that all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution? That's right. The servant is not above his master. If they persecute the master, they're going to persecute the servant. So we are not above God. So why do we think that we don't have to go through anything? Exactly. Why do we think that we don't have to suffer anything? That's right. Mm -hmm. Luke 8 and 22, I love this. Now, uh, verse, oh, uh, yeah, it says, Now it came to pass on a certain day. Then, we, then he went into ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. You know, like Pastor, in his few minutes, he got tired. He had been healing people. He had been delivering people. And he said, I'm going to take a nap. He says, he fell, and he, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind mm -hmm. on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and said, and awoke him, Master, Master, we pray. How many times you Lord, mm. where you at? <laughs> don't you see what I'm going through? Lord, don't you hear me? Yeah. I've been crying out to you. I've been doing it for 10 years now. I've been crying to you for five years now. Lord, where you at? Yeah. <laughs> he says, Master, Master, look, we perishing. So then Jesus arose, rebuked the wind, mm -hmm. and the raging of the water, and they ceased. And there was a calm. How many know sometimes in our life, it's like God will just speak. Yeah. He'll speak to your spirit, and all of a sudden now you're calm. Yeah. Now you're not worried about it. Even though the, the, sometimes in life the winds are still raging, things are still going on around you. Mm -hmm. But you don't got the point where God has spoke in your spirit and tell you it's all right. Yeah. He'll tell you peace be still. I got you. Yeah. I'm the thing about it. He was there with them. Now he don't told them, let's go to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> but then they put that Lord, don't, you sleeping? <laughs> and the boat about to sink? And because sometimes we're trying to go, Lord, where you at? But but the word says you never sleep, you never slumber. So I know you hear me. Mm -hmm. That's right. But why haven't you answered me yet? Yeah. Yeah. That's where trust comes in. Amen. I got the trust yes, that whatever's happening, that even if he doesn't answer me right now, I know he's able to answer me. I know he's able to fix it. But sometimes doing these tests and these trials is to build us up. Because you will never know where you are. God knows where we are. But I will never know where I am until I go through certain tests. And then I can see where I am. God already knows. He already knows you can stand the time. You already know you're not going to fall. Sometimes you feel like you're sinking. Sometimes you feel like you're drowning. But you're not. That's where you feel. <laughs> but uh, Psalms of Proverbs 3, 5, 6 tell us to trust in the Lord, Lord with all Lord. our heart. Lean not to our own understanding. You know, we want to understand everything. I want an explanation on to why this is going on. My and sometimes God may not give you an explanation. Exactly. That's why trust comes in. Mm -hmm. right. Trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean out to your own understanding. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Acknowledge Him in all our ways. See, sometimes we acknowledge Him in some of our ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't even acknowledge Him at all. <laughs> acknowledge Him in all our way, and He shall. Not might, yeah. not maybe, yeah. not possibility. Yeah. Says he shall yeah. direct our path. So so many times we're not acknowledging him. Yeah. Lord, what do I need to do? Amen. Lord, how do I need to handle this situation? Because in my flesh right now, the way I'm feeling right now, Amen. this is what I want to do. But Lord, you said if I love you, obey you. Amen. Yeah. So even though I may want to do one thing, if I love God like I say I do, then I've got to obey and do it the way he tells yes. me to do it. Amen. Amen. Yes. And the way he tells me to do it doesn't always feel good. You know, yeah. we want to feel good. You know how we do when, when somebody do it wrong, we expect for God to just do it a certain way. <laughs> we got to all the work out in our mind how God is going to fix it, how God is going to work out, how God is going to get them back. And then we can sit back and say, uh -huh, I told you they weren't going to do it right. I told you this, I told you God's going to be like that. That's right. You know, you know Lord, get them. Take them. Okay, I'm a child of a king. They're going to do me like that. Who they think they are? Don't 
they know who I am? Don't they know who I serve? And then pride get into you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did everything I do. I pay my tithes. I pay my tithes. I pay my tithes. I pay my offering. I come to every service. I come to every prayer meeting. You know, I told why. Why? Because now I'm getting self righteous. Now I'm thinking, okay, this should not happen to me. Mm. I'm caught up in myself now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna be helping my I'm so concerned about me mm-hmm. and how uncomfortable it is for me. Yeah. And how unbearable like I feel it is for me. Mm-hmm. Uh um turn to turn to Deuteronomy ten and twelve. Deuteronomy ten and twelve. And also in first Samuel thirty and six, you know when when David the Bible has, sometimes they're not being anybody to encourage you. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Amen. Now the Bible says that in 1 Samuel chapter 30 that David, that uh, the Amalekites had came in and destroyed Ziglag and burned it with fire and took yeah. the women and stuff, took them captive. And so the people were talking about stoning him. Mm-hmm. You, we followed you. And look what happened. Yeah. Never told that. Well, Pastor told me to do it. I'm following Pastor. And, and because I followed him now, because things did not go the way I thought. Now it's past the fall. <laughs> and that's where people felt what David was. Yeah, it is yeah. his fault. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if we hadn't been following you, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> if we hadn't connected with you, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. But since we connected with you, now we're going through all this. And the Bible said they were in distress. They were hollering. <laughs> crying, said in verse uh, 6, that David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. Yeah. <laughs> because the soul of the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself yeah. in the Lord. The verse said, then David and all the people that were with him lifted up their voice and cried, yeah. wept. Yeah. Until they couldn't weep no more. You don't cry so hard up the time until after a while you just don't cry no more. You don't cry all the tears. Y'all been like that. Cry yourself out. I've been like that before. Crying, crying, crying. I almost go out and say, okay, you got it out now. You finished it. You know? Wipe yourself off. Wipe your face. And still go do what I told you to do. Yes. Verse 12. He said that now, Israel, what doth the Lord require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve him with all your heart, all your soul, to keep the commandment of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Wow, it's for your good. So many times we think God is trying to restrict me. God is trying to hold me back. God don't want me to have this. No, it's for our good. Yes. There's danger there. So God said, don't go there. There's danger. So he's warning you, danger is ahead. Yeah. I remember I was, um, I remember I was in the military. And, uh, and I remember I used to look down on people. I wasn't saying that time, but I looked down on people. They would gamble, and I looked down on them. I said, oh, I can't believe you. That's stupid. I can't believe they do something like that. You never know it, but the trap has a set for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm overseas mm-hmm. in Korea and in a military police company. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and, 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 the, and the, the, the gambling, and, and, and didn't know about the generational curses, you know. Because uh, my dad used to gamble, and we would take the we would take his number. So they had the numbers, so we take the number, and drop them off on our way to school, oh. and then we pick up the numbers on our way back. <laughs> if we had some winning, and then Mama would gamble, and so I never thought it would have me. I'd be like, I got this. This don't have me. I'm in control. I can control this. But the devil had a plan. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Satan has a plan for each and every one of us. That's why you got to stay humble and get low. You can't look down on people because you never know you might be in the same state. All those people I looked down on, I found myself in the same situation that they were. I saw people going to jail for less than what I did. I 
I mean, I was like gambling. I'd go down to Las Vegas, you know, I was an hour and 45 minutes away. I'd go down to Las Vegas, run out of money, don't have enough money, go down and asking people, asking me, and say, can you give me some money? And pray, God, please don't let nobody ask me for nothing. And they would just give me the money. And I was looking on there, you know how uh, in the movie New Jack City where he said it calls to you. Mm-hmm. You know, the crack he said was called to him. That gambling was called to me. That's right. I was like, ding, 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 ding. I didn't even talk to him. <laughs> 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 and Yeah. <laughs> that was their expectation. That was, there. Thank you, Lord. that was what they planned. And, and 
about, about passing, he gave me the scripture where, where it talks about the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And, I said, and he said, I don't care what they say. He said, what God says is what matters. Amen. He said, the ones that go all the way to the post commander. Mm. Now, I think the only person that was in my favor was my, um, I think it was uh, my um, captain, my platoon captain. So he was a minority. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and so, but everybody else was like, no, go ahead, court martial, send a jail, send a jail. Mm -hmm. But when he got to the post commander, mm -hmm. and at that time, I was, uh, they didn't have what they called Gamma's Anonymous back then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They had what they had, alcohol was anonymous. Mm -hmm. And so I was drinking too, so that was all part of the oh, thing. Okay. And, and, but the, the counselor was a, he was a Christian white guy. Praise and, God. And he said, you need Jesus. <laughs> 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 Me. Mm -hmm. You know, but then once I said, I'm going to go to church. Because the thing was, I grew up in 